Welcome to Master Math. Today's lesson is going to deliver everything you need to know about surface area of composite solids. Composite solids are just several solids that have been combined to make a larger figure. It's kind of like working with building blocks. I could combine these building blocks to create a whole bunch of different shapes, a whole bunch of different solid figures. Well, usually in math, we're not asked to build the composite figure. We're asked to take it apart. For instance, this garage or barn, it's really not one figure. It's several figures that have been combined. It's a composite figure. Can you see those several figures? Well, if we lifted the top part off of the bottom part, we'd have a triangular prism on the top and a rectangular prism on the bottom. We could figure out the surface area of each of those and total it and we'd have the surface area of the composite figure. That doesn't sound too hard, but sometimes it's hard. Well, here's a composite figure and it's not as tough as that strange office building. It's kind of like that barn we looked at. In order to figure out the surface area of this composite figure, we have to be able to break it up into its components. We have to be able to separate it. And just like that barn, we could take the roof off. We could find a pyramid on the top and a prism on the bottom. And then we could figure out the surface area of the pyramid and add that to the surface area of the prism and we'd have the surface area of the composite solid. Well, well, not exactly, not exactly, and I'll show you why. This pyramid has a base under here. And when we combine the figures, that base becomes part of the interior, not the surface of the composite figure. And there's also a surface that you can't see that the base of the pyramid sits on. And that surface that you don't see is part of the prism that the pyramid sits on. So we can't count this in the surface area of the pyramid and we can't count the top of this prism in the surface area of the entire prism. Well let's see how we do this. Let's look at the prism first. The prism is 10 by 10 by 10 inches. It's a cube every surface is the same size. Each surface is 10 inches by 10 inches so the area of each of the surfaces is 100 square inches. Well how many surfaces are there? There's the base that it's sitting on. That's one. It's a square base with four sides so that means I've got one, two, three, four lateral sides but I don't have a top to this base because the pyramid is going to come down and make that top part of the interior of the composite figure. So I've got one, two, three, and the two sides on the other, uh, on the back. So I've got a total of five sides. So the area would be five times the area of each of the individual lateral faces, or a total of 500 square inches. Now let's deal with the pyramid. I've got four faces in the pyramid. I've got one, two, and then it's a four-sided base, so there's two more uh, lateral surfaces that are just like that. But there is no base, because the base is going to sit down on that uh, prism and be part of the interior. So I've got four faces on the pyramid. The area of each of those faces would be one half times the base times the height. One half times 10 times 15. Or each of them would be 75 square inches. There's four of them, so I've got a total of four times 75 or 300 square inches. Well, now all I got to do is total those two up. The prism is bringing 500 square inches, 
the pyramids bringing 300 square inches so the total is 800 square inches try this one hit the pause button do the problem and then hit your forward key well let's figure out the surface area of this mailbox first thing we have to do is see what uh, individual solids were put together to create the composite figure and I can see two solids I can see a rectangular prism right there and I can see sitting on top of it half of a cylinder so we've got half of a cylinder and a rectangular prism now we just have to figure out the surface areas that each of those are going to contribute to the composite figure let's deal with the prism first I've got a 5 by an 11 side and there's one here and there's one on the back side of the mailbox so I've got two 5 by 11 sides each of them would have an area of 5 by 11 so 2 times 5 by 11 is 110 square inches now I've got one side that's 6 by 11 that's a 6 inch dimension because they tell us 6 there 6 by 11 so the, the base that it's sitting on is 6 by 11. There is no comparable size uh, 6 by 11 uh, uh, face on the top because that becomes part of the interior of the composite figure. So I've got one side that's 6 by 11 and that's contributing 66 square inches. Then I've got two sides that are 5 by 6. 5 by 6. This side and one on the back here. So that's 2 times 5 times 6, or 60 square inches. So my total for the prism is 110 plus 66 plus 60, or 236 square inches. Next, I've got to do my half cylinder. It's a half cylinder, so the formula for the surface area would be 1 half times the normal formula for the surface area of a cylinder. Now all I got to do is substitute 3.14 for pi and 4 inches for the radius. That's the radius right there. And I've got to, got to substitute the height or 11 inches and that's the height right there. So I've got 2 times 3.14 times 4 times 11 plus I've got the uh, area of the bases which would be 2 times 3.14 times 4 squared so I've got a total of 1 half 376.8 or 188.4 square inches now all that's left to do is to add those two composite portions up 236 plus 188.4 equals 424.4 square inches. Not another mailbox problem. Oh yeah, you got to put up with another mailbox problem. And the first thing you got to do is figure out what solids have been combined to make this composite figure. And I can see a couple. I can see a rectangular prism and sitting on top of it I can see a triangular prism so there's two figures a triangular prism sitting on top of a rectangular prism let's deal with the rectangular prism first I've got two sides that are 180 by 70 that side right there and the other one on the opposite side so they're each bringing 180 by 70 and there's two of them so 2 times 180 by 70 equals 25,200 square centimeters now I got two sides that are 180 by 85 85 by 180 and there's one on the opposite side as well so the area would be 2 times 85 times 180 2 times 180 times 85 equals 30,600 square centimeters 
And then I've only got one base on the bottom there. That that particular side doesn't have a parallel side on the top because the parallel side on the top becomes part of the interior when we combine it with the triangular prism. So I've got one, and it's 70 centimeters by 85 centimeters. 85 times 70 equals 5,950 square centimeters. Now I've got to add those three uh, components up and the uh, triangular, excuse me, the rectangular prism on the bottom is contributing 61,750 square centimeters. Now let's deal with the triangular prism. I've got two sides that are 25 by 70 triangles, 25 by 70, and the area of a triangle is one half the base times the height, so it's one half 25 times 70, and there's two of them. So that totals to 1,750 square centimeters. Now I've got only one side down here that's 85 by 25, and that's going to be 2,125 square centimeters that it's contributing. I got the side on the back that we can't really see, but we know that dimension of it is 75 centimeters, and we know this dimension of it is 85 centimeters. So that's a single side that's 75 by 85, or 6,375 square centimeters. So now I've got the four sides that the triangular prism is, is contributing to the composite figure, and they total up to 10,250 square centimeters. Well now, all I've got to do is add what the rectangular prism contributes and what the triangular prism contributes, and I get a total of 72,000 square centimeters. Here's the last one you're going to have to try on this uh, lesson. I've got a uh, figure here that's really a composite of two different figures. I've got half of a sphere, and I've got a cylinder. And the surface area of a sphere equals 4 pi r squared. But remember, that's only half a sphere. And the surface area of a cylinder equals 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r squared. But remember, that 2 pi r squared is the area of the base, and normally there are two bases. But the first, but the second base is going to become part of the interior in this composite figure, so I think you need to multiply that by a half. Well, let's see if you can figure this one out. Hit the pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. All right, well, let's figure out how much the sphere is contributing. And remember, it's a half a sphere. And the surface area of a whole sphere would be 4 pi r squared, or in our case, 4 times pi, 3.14, times the radius squared, or 6 squared. But we've only got half of that sphere. So the sphere is contributing 226.08 square inches. The cylinder, the formula is 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r squared. So, if I substitute the information that I was given in the problem for the radius and the height, I get 2 times pi, 3.14, times the radius times the height, and that's the surface area of the lateral side. And to that I'm going to add the surface area of the bases. But the formula, it really includes, it's 2 pi r squared, it would include this base plus another base on the top. But the base on the top is going to become part of the interior, so I've got to take one half of the formula. One half times 2 times pi times 6 squared, and that totals 678.24. And when I total those two components up, I get 904.32 square inches. 
I know that surface area of a composite solids can be a little bit tough for you to figure out, but you really got to think. You really got to try to visually separate the composite figure into its components. And then you have to think about what portion of each of the components is not going to be part of the surface area of the composite figure because it becomes part of the interior of the composite figure. Well, let's figure out how much you learned about this. Go to www.mastermath.info and download the worksheet on the surface area of composite solids. After you tried that worksheet, go back to MasterMath and try the quiz on surface areas of composite solids. Come on back and see us again soon.